Okay, let's get started. Oh hey, welcome back everyone. So today we have problem from Elmo 2010 that I haven't done yet. So you have two positive integers R and S and you define a Fibonacci-like sequence, which is any Fibonacci-like sequence. And then you let f of n be the product of the first um, n things in that sequence. And you want to prove that fn over fk, fn minus k is always an integer. I'm sorry for your loss of hair for Andrew and... Okay, uh, so what do I do? First of all, how is this result even true? I actually don't believe the result when I first see it. Um, so, name reveal WTF. Oh, I, I... Okay, that's fair. For some reason, I thought the username was the actual name, but it is a permutation of the actual name like mine, so my bad. Uh... I'm just I'm just amazed the result is actually true. So let me compete a few times because I'm I'm really surprised by this. So a one is like art, and then a two is like. R squared plus S, right? A th sorry, A3. Wait, how's this result true? Like, if I look at F3 over F1, F2, is that. And that's not an integer, right? Wait, what? Wait, what did I. What? So wait, did, did I miscompute? Oh, oh, sorry. Ah. Okay, never mind. Uh, as I, I, I just can't read. Okay, actually, so in that case, I want to start by just canceling a gazillion terms, right? Because like fn over uh, f k fn minus k. This is trivial by inspection. Okay, very cool. Um, so if let's just without loss generally assume k is at most n halves a two yeah so you want a m actually that's a better way to put it it's like the f the product of the first k should divide the product of any other um kind of can I just replace k by k minus one uh but let's let k greater than one. So, slightly change variable names, the result we want to prove is amounts to this. Okay, this looks a lot more believable. I think I believe this. And then you induct on n. Why is a0 there? Oh, good, good point. a0 should not be there. Uh... Oh, fine. Okay. Okay, we'll take a nice one. Uh, a A I divides A K I. Wait, really? Oh my God! It's, uh, I can't keep up with you kids too fast. Okay, R cubed plus S R two R cubed plus two R S. Wait, how wait. You want GCD AM AN. This is very trivial. Well, okay. Like, if you've done a problem before, it tends to be pretty easy. Uh, now I'm just confused. A 
Ja, der war jetzt AKI finishes. Wait, first of all, where are these relations coming from? Like, I still haven't computed more than like five terms on the sequence and everyone's telling me that something's going on. We can't... 2R squared S. 3R squared S. God, I can't keep up with Twitch chat. Okay. Um. So, um, it is, okay, I think the following is true. So, uh, the, the claim that I'm getting is the, um, I think it, it should be true that AK, yeah, like AK divides AK, or we'll, we'll do AL divides AL. Oh, yeah. If m divides n, it should be true, then am should divide am. I think that is true. Because what you can do is you can take the sequence modulo, uh, take modulo like a sub n or something. Right? So it's like a0 is 0, then a0 is congruent to an, going to 0 mod an, and then that will carry through. Why do the multiples not overlap? I'm so confused. What is the lemma? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't keep up. Uh, Alright, I'm just gonna ignore the chat. Uh... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I I would like to put up some appropriate background music. So I, I think this part is definitely fine, right? So A, like, you... Oh, sorry, I meant to take modulo AM. So you get this, um... You can do it, f like, for his induction thing. Um, does I divides J imply... I mean, the sequence could be, like, 1, right? And then it's not true. Like, if R equals S equals 1, then, like, A3 is 2 and A2 is 1. So I think that, like, the converse should definitely not work. Or, yeah, R equals 1 is equal to 0. Mm. Well, let, me, let me change this to... Uh, okay. 
So what do I make of that? Uh, like five, six, seven. I think five, six, seven is a good example to look at actually, because that's the one where we ran into trouble. Um, uh, I think also there's a sense in which S seems to have degree two. Um, yeah, I think you should treat R as degree one and S as degree two or something. And all the equations are homogeneous. Of course, I can actually do that. Um, because of integer things, but S. Okay, so that's R cubed S plus 2R squared S. I think I made a computation error. This one is not correct, right? 3R squared. Yeah, this would be. Two, this is 1s squared, not 2s squared. Because otherwise it doesn't even match for one So I have an extra r squared s. Mm. You need periodic mod n for that, right? Do I? No, I don't think I do, because what happens is then am plus 1 will be congruent to, for example, um, well, sorry, let like t equals am plus 1, then am plus 2 is congruent to ta2, for I think, mod a sub n, I believe is what happens. And I think this should, I, if I'm not mistaken, this should, like, when you have a zero in Fibonacci-like sequences, like, it doesn't promise you the sequence, yeah. It's not going to be, like, periodic, but the zero set will be periodic, because it's just a scalar multiple. So I think this claim is fine. It's just that, as he's pointed out, like, when you look at 5, 6, 7 versus 1, 2, 3, you cannot do that splitting um, thingy. Uh, yeah. So I'm curious, like, what will happen when our, I look at, like, A7 and see... 4 r to the 4 s, so 5 r to the 4 s. So I'm already starting to see that these coefficients are actually pretty nice. Um, r squared s cubed, right? No, r cubed s, oh, freaking. r to the 4. Three plus three is six. And then plus S to the four. Okay, so actually, I think you can explicitly write an explicit formula for the AI. Um, but what was I interested in? Is it true that a2, a3 divides a6? That does seem to be true, right. So we wanted something like, um, if I assume gcdrs is one, does that, is that good enough to get you a gcd type claim? <laughs> I have a lot of those forms if you want one. Yeah, but I mean, when you look at this, I think I know what this is, right? Like this, the coefficient, this coefficient is always one. This coefficient is like, and this coefficient is the, like, thing choose two, two choose two, three choose two, four choose two, and the next one will probably be like, uh, choose three. So you can you can kind of see Pascal's triangle in here, but that might be more than what we need. Um, on the other hand, yeah, I agree, maybe, how can you just assume GC, oh, wait, maybe we can't, sorry, no, you can't just do that. Uh, well, you sort of can actually, uh, actually, it's, no, that's not clear, sorry. Um, be like that. <sighs> yeah. No, we can't. Yeah. Yeah, but for like, so in that key example we ran into with um, A6, A7 over A1, A2, A3. We saw that uh, we don't care about a one. This is a two a three actually divides a six, 
Like both these two numbers divide a6. So that's sort of what we want to go after. It's not triangular numbers, it isn't. Do I not do I not get triangular numbers? Oh no. I didn't. This should be right. <laughs> Pascal's triangle but drunk. Uh Oh, sorry, I, for I dropped a coefficient of s squared. Also, this should be s cubed. I'm so bad at this. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't- I don't know if I promoted DJ to a mod. Yeah, I think they, they are, but just by induction. Like, the way they're being constructed is... Like, it sort of is it. It's just not clear to me that those closed forms are, like, us usable. I don't know if you know. Uh, I've not really Q binomials. It seems like, yeah, I think that's beyond what I know. I don't know. Yeah, it's actually written. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I need a two, a three to divide a six. Like I know a two divides a six. Can I not? Mm. Hey, so for Fibonacci numbers, like if r equals s equals one, what's the what's the corresponding GCD statement? Like, do, do we think like a of if you have Fibonacci numbers, well, how do the GCDs behave?
Do these factor in any interesting way? So this one is like R times R squared plus two. One, three, one is irreducible, right? That's not gonna factor. The one, one, three is not irreducible. It factors as, so this factors as like R, R plus, R squared plus three S times R squared plus three S. Yeah, the other thing we could do is try to quote match algebraic number theory and magic. <laughs> like, uh, you have a. Uh, it's like alpha to the n. AK divides APM plus K minus AM. That would be nice if it was true. Is that actually true? I feel like I'm skeptical that's true. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be true though. Like, If I look mod A3, for example, mod A3, where R squared equals minus S, um, like, this is one, and this is something that's probably not one. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, the, it won't work in that situation either. Why do people use MathRM? Because they don't know that there are alternatives. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of like, I... The highbrow thing I can try to do is say, um, there's sort of two classes of sequence I to care about. One is sequences of the form like a to the n equals... Well, the sequence is necessarily the form like alpha to the n plus beta to the n for some alpha and beta. Um, and actually it's, it's going to be the sequence will be given exactly by alpha to the n minus beta to the n over alpha minus beta, where alpha and beta are two algebraic integers. Possibly like conjugate type things. Um, enough. So, the sequence always has this shape by like characteristic polynomial theory. And actually, that this shape is a little nice because you start, you actually can see why this thing must always be true. Um, Actually, hang on. Yeah, so this follows from difference of powers. The quotient is an algebraic integer, hence integer. Um, yeah, the qu sorry, quotient is a rational algebraic integer, hence it's an integer. Um, so now, what about the A6 thing? I feel like this thing should be... Wait, I, I, I think maybe you can just nuke the problem. <laughs> uh. 
Okay, here, here. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. Um. So we're gonna write this thing. And again, as a reminder, the thing we wanted to prove was this. So we're gonna write alpha an is alpha to the n minus b to the n over alpha minus beta, where alpha and beta are algebraic integers. So the statement you wanna prove then boils down to you you want something like the following statement. Um you need to show uh so on the top I'm gonna have alpha to the um, m minus beta. So the alpha to the beta minus beta term cancels out. And here's alpha to the m plus k minus 1 minus beta to the m plus k minus 1. And on the bottom is alpha minus beta, alpha squared minus beta squared, up to alpha to the k minus beta to the k. And my goal, I believe, what's going to happen is that, um, Oh, frick. No match found for curly brace. Oh, frick. No! No! My curly brace! Uh, let's try that again. Control X. So I believe this will be an in I believe this will be some integer coefficient polynomial in alpha and beta because it's symmetric. That will imply, um... Well, it's a rational number, uh, a priori. But I'm going to simplify it so that it's a polynomial in alpha and beta. And when I do that, it will be like a algebraic integer as well. And rational algebraic integers are integers, so that will solve the problem. So claim this, this we get a divisibility. Claim we get a divisibility as polynomials in alpha and beta. All right, so this will, this should definitely work um, because. Why? Yeah, consider a primitive uh, kth root of. Uh, I don't even care about the. Actually, I could say atomic point, but I just say like, consider a primitive um, by homogenizing because it's homogeneous. Suffices to show for beta equals one and alpha equals x. So in other words, I want to show that. Um, Yeah, so I can basically replace every beta here with 1. And every alpha here with x. It's the same thing just because all the degrees are the same. Alright. Alright. Mm -hmm. Alright, and now uh, if zeta is a is a kth root of unity. Um, well, let's just say d root um, m, m root of unity. Um, it appears at least as many times. Let's say primitive on top as on bottom, or whatever. Just any root of unity. This is easy to check. Uh, not sorry, not m. Let's just say r root. All right, and that we're done. All right. Nukes are strong. Okay, so someone told me I just reinvented Q binomial coefficients. I don't really. What is a Q binomial coefficient? Oh, ha, huh, it's exactly the same thing. Okay. <laughs> I see. Okay. So this thing, if I replace X with Q, apparently it's called a Q binomial coefficient. Um, no, I feel like cyclotomic is not really the point. I think the point was when I looked at the closed form, I was like, wait a minute, this will factor, like, I wrote down the closed form, not expecting it to do anything, and I'm like, wait a minute, this closed form is actually really nice, because the normal there's will factor out. Um, what I was originally worried about is I was worried that, you know, because when you have a linear recurrence, you have these awful coefficients in front of alpha and beta usually, right? Where alpha and beta are the roots. And um, I, was, I was expecting it to be bad, but then I realized that the coefficient here is just, it's the same for both alpha and beta. Like it's well up to a sign. It's not like some crap times alpha to the n plus some crap times beta to the n. No, it's like you factor out. Why is polynomial an integer? So alpha and beta are what's called algebraic integers. They're algebraic integers because they are the roots of a monic integer polynomial. 
um, t squared minus alpha t plus or plus a ct. So what that means is this expression. Um, let, let me be more explicit because this does require me to write out. So the conclusion is that alpha, the resulting number, is an algebraic integer. Uh, I agree, I, symmetric would work, but I think it's more conceptual for me to say this is the conclusion. Uh, the resulting number is an algebraic integer. Uh, oh, is it minus s? Yeah, minus s. Because it's the sum, it's the sum of products of algebraic integers. However, a priori, the ratio is also a rational number because it's the quotient of two integers. And it's a fact, it follows from the rational root theorem that if you have an algebraic integer that's also a rational number, then it is an integer in the sense we're used to. So like alpha minus beta won't be an integer, um, as you said, because, but it will also not even be rational. The claim is that because it's rational and algebraic integer, we get integer. But also, it would suffice to notice that it's symmetric in alpha and beta. That that's also fine. Like you just say, look, it's symmetric. So by like symmetric polynomial theory, um, it's some polynomial in R and S. The uh, algebraic integer is the, yeah, monic minimum polynomial with integer coefficients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's quite nice. Yeah, the, it's sort of like, uh, Yeah. Well, honestly, the fact that it's preserved under addition is sort of basically a symmetric argument anyways. Like, if alpha is an algebraic integer and beta is a different algebraic integer, um, to show that alpha plus beta is an algebraic integer, you like take all the Galois conjugates of alpha and all the Galois conjugates of beta, and you look at every possible sum. So like, alpha i plus beta j for all choices of i and all choices of j, and then you expand it and say it's symmetric so it has integer coefficients. So honestly, I should just quote symmetry like a normal person because <laughs> the proof of the proof that these two together imply the proof that is closed. I'm sorry. The proof of this thing requires the symmetry anyways. So why not just use the symmetry, right? Okay, well we're adding this in. Okay. Uh, database. So I'm starting to, it used to be like I would do all the write-ups offline when I later on my own time and I realized I was procrastinating like, <laughs> I was, I had massive procrastination problems with doing the write-ups. Uh, so <laughs> now I'm just doing them during the stream because the other thing is it's good for me to make sure my solution is correct because uh, there, there's a lot of times where I'm like writing it up and as I'm writing it up I'm like, you screwed something up in stream and then it's too late to fix it. So yeah, I agree this feels like a good in poly problem though. That, that is true. Okay, so let's copy in the stuff. Um, from the theory of the name. Since we know there is an algebraic integer. I need to handle alpha equals beta. Oh crap. <laughs> uh, does that happen? I feel like, okay. I take the limiting case. Oops.
the, the close form if alpha equals beta um what happens when alpha equals beta hang on uh... <laughs> oh crap uh I think that can't happen because R and S are positive integers. Yeah, positive. Thankfully. Uh, <laughs> Cop now. <laughs> Is the problem true when alpha equals beta? Wow, I didn't know my autocomplete had gotten that smart. <laughs> it's trying to display the Base64 image data for spadesuit command. But of course it's Vim, so it can't actually render the image. <laughs> Wait, I'm not clean. Should be true of, like this name should be true over a non algebraic closed field. Um n times alpha to the n. Yeah, it looks like it's just n g's code. What was the other problem remaining? Um I forget, I'll have to double check. Um I think it's the one about spies, if I remember right. Okay, let's see how this looks. Uh, this shouldn't say by homogeneous, it should just be a sense of homogeneous. Okay, great. Um, oh, very nice. More algebraic number theory. 